Welcome to another edition of Metal Rock Live. I'm here with Eric again. How you doing? And uh, today's uh, episode, we're going to be talking about the uh, intake manifolds and you know just the different applications, uh, what kind of intake manifold you need for your application. And we're just going to take you through uh, the different uh, types and uh, you know the different models. So pretty much an entry level intake manifold that we have is our performer intake manifold. So this is pretty much like a stock replacement. It does have better runner, uh, runner uh, design. And the main thing with this is uh, the, ID, the RPM range. So the RPM range on the performer is from idle up to 5,500 RPMs. And then from there, um, if you wanted to get something a little more performance wise, um, then you'd go something like the RPM. Yeah, and the RPM comes in kind of two different formats, RPM and then this is what we have here is the air gap, which has, you know, the, the runners are raised up. So your RPM is a great, like, middle of the road, street intake manifold. This yeah. is kind of what a lot of guys go with, because it just, it's like I said, it's better than stock, but yet it's not to the extreme yeah. that it's going to be, your car's going to run bad because it's not a race, full race with a, with a single plane design, but really good. Uh, like I said, we have, but it definitely has a higher deck than, than you would see on our performer. But yeah, just a really good all around intake. I mean, these things have been tested by, God, media and editorial guys over God, the last 20 years, yeah. and it, RPM always seems to just shine. It's just the perfect combination of improved airflow um, and just a really good all-around solid design. And the cool part is these, both of these manifolds, we actually uh, sell them in something like this, which is a, like a low rise, and then like Eric was saying, the air gap. So yeah. you can really tell in the air gap. Um, there's actual, there's pretty much an air gap under the runners. So what it does is it, it helps uh, the intake manifold not get as hot from the valley and then it also just it helps with performance and then on with the air gap you get a little longer runner length as well so that helps out you know with yeah. that, that this is actually that. one of those instances where this is race technology like back you go back when they first started doing this um this came from nascar and nascar started doing this ah. getting that air to come through the intake you know get through the intake get that you know some some cooler denser charge in the runner get that runner off of the uh, the valley plate and the block and so it's kind of you know it's one of you always talk about that like you know, racing technology works its way down exactly. into the street. This is actually a prime example of that. Yeah. And we do offer, we offer both the Performer and the RPM in an air gap or just a standard uh, dual plane intake manifold. And then if you're gonna go for more of a race application, then you'd wanna step up to, up to a single plane intake manifold, which is something like our Victor Junior right here. Yeah, and the Victor series, so yeah, this is, you're definitely stepping up and, in, and, there's, and there's, that's where you kinda gotta, you kinda gotta make that divide. Like, yeah. hey, here's street, now we're heading towards strip. Um, even yeah. though you can use a Victor on the street, um, it's just you're gonna get a lot better bottom end performance yeah, we, out of a dual plane like these two. Yeah, we get a lot of questions. I get a lot of questions online on Facebook and Instagram yeah. about um, what what would happen if you run a single plane manifold on the street. I mean, there really isn't anything bad that will happen, but the problem is because of the longer length and all that of the runners, um, you lose that low end torque, uh, yeah. the low end power. So I mean, that where the where the single plane intake manifold really shines is up in like 35 to you know up to 8500 yeah. rpms most of the time when you're running on the street unless you're you know you have a really heavy foot um, yeah. you're not really up above 3500 rpms so that's if you're running like a race application where you're constantly up in the you know the power band and all that kind of stuff then the, absolutely the single plane intake manifold that's where you want to go with yeah at that point it's a straight runner design kind of we call it like a line of sight you're just trying to feed the engine as much air as you can as quick as you can. So that's where a Victor comes in handy. And also to the Victors, as you can see, this is a, a 4150 style flange. A lot of, from the Victor, Victor Junior, Super Victors, all are available with a 4500 series flange. Right. A lot bigger, more air. You know, you're definitely, like I said, this just is all about top end performance yeah. for sure. I mean, like I said, some of these are used, some of our basic Victor Junior designs are used for EFI. That's right. Because EFI doesn't way, it's different. You're now, especially port injection, because you're, 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 you're you're injecting the fuel at the port, so you're not really concerned about that that charge and battling. Yeah, fire. a lot of people are worried about the single plane on our Pro Flow yeah. 4 systems and stuff like that. And I try to explain to everybody that, you know, the main the main thing about the dual plane is the distribution of fuel and air. So this really shines when you're just cruising, you know, for street applications, stuff yeah. like that. When you have an EFI system, all you need is air because the injectors ride behind the, the valve. Yeah. So it's at the optimal place, so it pretty much it, it injects that fuel right where you need it. So you don't really have to worry about fuel distribution. It's going to get the same amount of fuel every single time when you're on EFI. Carb rated applications, it's obviously a little bit different. Yeah, carb because you're mixing that fuel in the plenum, you yeah. got to have your air distribution 
a little bit better. She's not getting pulses and sur exactly. surges and stuff like that. Um, Danny Rubio is asking for former for his 302 1970 Mustang. And see, that's what we get into. There's more questions to go beyond that. Like, are you running a stock setup? If you got a very similar to stock setup in the way of camshaft, heads, then the performer makes sense, yep. you know. But if you've got maybe some performance, aluminum heads, um, you know, the cams, the thing, um, pretty, look at a lot of going and lift, so we're going to have to compete with that. Yeah. Uh, it's really that next step up. It's kind of, you know, it's a high. Um, Got another one from Joel. Joel, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess up your last name, Joel. I'm just gonna say, it. well, he's asking, where's the tunnel ram? The tunnel ram works into kind of, it's interesting. It's a very good question. Back, you go back in the 50s when the tunnel rams were big. Yeah. In the 60s, you know, that kind of would have fallen in between these two. But in the last few years, any new tunnel rams that we made for like big block Chevy, yeah. we actually consider them a Victor level because they are a single plane, exactly. big plenum, direct line of really sight. Really long runners. All that that, kind that of is stuff. ultimately a race application. Yeah. I mean. We've got guys that run them on the street. We see those guys at car shows, and it's it looks great. Yeah. It's cool looking, but, but honestly, the drive <laughs> light to light is not the, it's, it's not the best, yeah. you know. So yeah, but don't get me wrong. They look cool. We we still sell a ton of them. People love them. Yep. Um, but yeah, for a street car, not the most ideal, definitely. But yeah, it, those kind of fall in the Victor range. You know, it's a big plenum, ton of air. A lot of times you're seeing dual carbs. Yep. You're pushing well over a thousand cfm. Oh you know, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, let's see what I've got any questions here. Oh, Raymond Garcia is asking about where's the Pontiac? You know what, Ray? We <laughs> grabbed what we could grab, but as you guys know, we've got these you know intakes available for a lot of popular applications. Small big block Chevy, um, I mean big small big block Ford, Pontiac, Chrysler, Buick, Oldsmobile. Like just hit our website and, and we pretty much have got an intake for every performance level on all those engine families. Um, some there might be a little bit of gaps here and there, but I mean. We've got it. We even got it for Holden. For you guys down there in Australia, we got Holden intakes. Yep. Um, even for LS, uh, LS applications as well. There's a lot of guys taking LSs and going carbureted or going with Victor level with a, you know, maybe a, they've got the, uh, the, the uh, I'm thinking of it, like the, uh, an elbow on it. They're running oh, yeah. turbo or forced yep. induction and they still want this style of application because they're trying to move a ton of air. Exactly. So yeah, do hit the website. We got pretty much every application you want, even you Pontiac guys, Ray. Uh, I don't think no other questions coming through right now. But yeah, definitely. And also two finishes as well. So yeah. we do have our you know our standard satin finish. And then we do have the black finish on select intakes. Yep. Not a lot. Mm -hmm. And then we also offer... the uh, We have a chrome finish, or the uh, Endurashine finish. Endurashine, that's right. And then we have a polished as well. Yeah. yeah, so we offer four finishes. Not all finishes are available on all applications, but yeah. you know we do sometimes do special order, that kind of stuff. So, yeah. you know depending on your application and what kind of finish you're looking for. Raymond Garcia's got another question. Raymond's asking about any CNC intake manifolds, and yes, that is true. When we get into, not in your RPM and down, definitely yeah. not. When you get into the Victor level, and not so much Victor Junior, like we have, in our Victor level, you got Victor Junior, Victor, then Super Victor. Yeah. Uh, you'll see a lot, of our, a lot of our Victor level will do have some CNC ported, kind of match, That's meant right. to match our heads, raised runner design, definitely getting more specialized. So yeah, we do have some, some non-standard, I say non-standard, because CNC is a little yeah. bit more, it's yep. more expensive, more time. But yeah, we do do CNC matching to our heads, and also to some other popular heads out there from the other guys. The cool part is, that, you know, when we go to, when we do PRI in December, you see some of those guys that take uh, our intake manifolds and completely CNC that inside and oh, outside. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. When they get them super light, I, mean, I, thought, I think last year was the first year I've actually ever seen that. that was yeah, it's impressive. crazy. Those guys are machine away. A ton yeah, of material. It's like car guys wow. are nuts. We even have some on the Victor level when you get up where we actually have a two-piece intake. That's right. To where it's actually divided in half, allows the guy to actually be able to put in his CNC machine, build a program, and it goes back together. It's got an O-ring yep. uh, groove in it. I mean, just really, there's some, you get in the Victor level, there's some crazy yeah. stuff we got going on there with, with some designs that kind of help those guys really specialize it to their application, whether it's drag race, yeah. it's standing mile, like you name it. Like those, when you get into the Victor level, there's definitely, you're working with an engine builder or if you're the engine builder, you know exactly what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh man, somebody's gonna stump me. Ray Stax <laughs> is asking me, what does the EPS stand for in the Performer EPS? That's a good one. You know, Smitty would know that. I'm yeah. sorry, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't know it. I know, God, it's been, I mean, that's, man, that's a good one. Yeah. 
Yeah, that would be a we're at the, you have to I'll follow up on that one. one. Yeah, I'm gonna go ask Smitty after the show. Yeah, I can't. Oh, God, I knew at one point what it stood for, and that was that was a Vic Edelbrock thing, and that yeah. was something that that Vic Jr. Oh, really? came up with. Yeah, 2701. Because uh, before that, we had in the 2701, which is the EPS, we had a 2101, which truly was a, a true stock replacement. Gotcha. Like they literally just took what the OE had in cast in iron and just turned uh, it into aluminum. Make it lighter. Yeah. yeah. When the 2701 came out, that was when we kind of there was a little bit of runner design. Tweaks are made, adjustments, kind of that was you're going for performance, you know, it's still a stock replacement in the sense of all your accessory holes, everything's in the right place, just like all of our other intakes. But, I think uh, somebody yeah. answered that question for us. Edelbrock Performer Series, Steve Paul, <laughs> actually one of my guys, we're working back in the department. Awesome, thanks uh, Edelbrock Steve. Performer Series, so yeah, and you'll see that, we actually used to have uh, EPS carburetors, like, that's right. that's right, so look at that, well, there you go. good win, man, everybody's <laughs> paying attention. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Well, I mean, I think that pretty much covers it. You got anything else, Eric? No, I think that's it. Like I said, hit the website, check it out. Like I said, we've got applications for a lot of popular engine families. Um, check it out, and I think we got what you want. Awesome. All right. Well, this is uh, Eddie and Eric signing out. See you guys later. See ya.